This is the mysterious city of Sam. It is located in the middle of nowhere, somewhere in Siberia, in the south of Krasnesk province near Tiberkul Lake. It exists for more than 30 years, and over the 30 years of its existence, this unique settlement has grown and developed and acquired an incredible number of myths and legends. Many people know that this settlement of eco villages was founded by the Saron. However, you won't be able to find true information about this place, about lifestyle of these people. And if you find something, this very probably won't be the truth, because in order to make any false story successful, you need hype, you need intrigues, scandals, investigation, and if they won't work to generate shocking content, Mass media usually engage a special, well-trained team of myth-makers capable of making horrifying false stories which would terrify viewers, making sure that this will keep their audience. When I've heard the information about leaders of the community was arrested, I decided to make my own investigation of this problem and visit the city of Sun. Я решил лично разобраться в этой проблеме и нанести визит в город Солнца. 22 сентября 2020 года на On 22nd of September the city of Sun was stormed by helicopters and armed troops. They came here fully armored with very serious intentions. What is interesting, in case there is some disaster really, it would be more logical to send helicopters from Krasnoyarsk, which is the closest city, but they flew from Novosibirsk region, which is much further. They did searches everywhere, searched for prohibited substances and found only one bottle of homemade wine. They looked for ammunition and found 12 hunting cartridges. They were looking for black money, millions of dollars in Basel funds. They found only 1,000 rubles from the Saron himself. The media started to broadcast in false stories showing that uh, all confiscated funds uh, and a lot of uh, weapon and uh, money exaggerating everything in thousand times. And one little boy asked uh, one of the special force guys, saying, excuse me, sir, are you Russian? Yes, he said. Why do you want to find this Russian then? And the officer didn't know what to answer. This raid still raises many questions. A year later, no charges were filed yet against the detained people. No evidence were found and arrested people are still in custody. However, all leading mass media altogether created a negative image about the community. The religious bias showed this picture, but it looked in fact like this. It took me a whole day to travel from Krasnoyarsk to the Saron's community. It is about 60, uh, 650 kilometers. On the way, I've kept on thinking about one question. Who could be bothered by these people that settled far away from the civilization? Why? There are a lot of rumors which have been continuously spread that people in the community are starving, that they are not allowed to eat meat, drink and smoke. And if somebody wants to join the community, he or she needs to pay major financial contribution. At the same time, according to the pictures posted in the internet, members of the Saron's community do not look like starving lumpens. And at the same time, it is well-known fact that these people develop wooden architecture and various arts and crafts and start uh, earning decent money on that. And how come that the son of the leader of the totalitarian sect, which supposedly does not let any people out, left the abode of Dawn in order to live closer to the world and develop his blacksmithing business? Why the community existed peacefully for 30 years and only now the prosecutorial bodies considered that the Church of the Last Testament poses a certain threat to the national interest. Many of my followers were really concerned about my decision to plunge into the very heart of the religious community since I am an atheist. They were afraid that sect members will be putting some pressure on me or take away all my property. 
I need to say that I didn't have any intention to explore any particular religion during my trip. I wanted just to make sure that people living in these villages and they happy and having fulfilling life, and just other people around them envy and make all sorts of false fantastic stories. We covered 600 kilometers and finally found ourselves in the village of Petropavlovka. This is the main village of the surrounds community. We were accommodated in such a nice Chinese-style guest house. Jenny, who is the owner of this guest house, welcomed us warmly, treated us with coffee and cookies. The guest house had all conveniences, electricity, hot and cold water, shower, comfortable beds, a stove, which you can use to cook food in wintertime, however it is not winter now. And here is such an interesting design in a Chinese style. Roman Porop, uh, Viserone's eldest son, kindly agreed to arrange a tour for me to the places that will be of interest to me. This building is so-called hangar. We organize different events here. People come together. Sometimes we arrange meeting here, uh, creative workshops with children, various after-school arts and crafts groups. Several workshops operate here, and we will see them later a little bit. Look here. This is our souvenir shop. Please come in. Here, our craftsmen leave their handiworks. Come, come in and take a look. These products are all made by our craftsmen. This is, if you look from the top shelf, is a steam of extract of herbs, so-called hydrolates. This is a tooth powder, totally organic, which you can you can even even eat that. These are different balms made on the basis of the fir tree, with addition of various herbal extracts, which can help to solve different health problems. All kinds of oils, all kinds of herbal ointments, balms, spray drops, some bee products. On this shelf, we also have one woman, a herb doctor. Uh, she put her products here. Here we have uh, some paintings of our artists. In this case, these are all reproductions. We have artists here. Uh, these are reproductions of the surrounds painting. He does his paintings in oils and chalk pastel, and here you can look at some of his works. Contrary to the common beliefs, the Saron is not traffic cop or policeman by his occupation. Well, there was some period in his life when he graduated from the police academy with his friend and worked in police for a short period of time, but rather quickly left this job. His true mission is philosophy and painting, and the subtle nature of professional artists is hardly com hardly compatible with reality of work in a police. Very sweet puppets. What are they? These are little fairies. They are absolutely amazing, exquisite. All little details are very delicate here. They are also very interesting products. They are made of cedar, bird cherry, apple trees, and they are already cooked in oil and therefore ready to use. Look what the texture. Texture is amazing and very interesting. Nice pillows, very cozy. These herb bags and pottery. And what's that? This is a hair comb. These are our young, let's say our children, teenagers do. Pottery. All is done here, is it right? Yes. This is a coffee set, and this is the birch bark, food beds made of the birch bark. It's very interesting, first time when I see this. These are new products, they appeared recently. Well, birch bark has many useful properties, antifungal, antibacterial, and gives energy as well. Here, such a box uh, appeared with us yesterday, very interesting, unusual, made of the birch bark as well. Angelica honey, can you imagine that? I was allowed to taste it. Uh, Angelica is such a herb, very thick. Angelica honey tastes nice. The Cerone 
Men with the Sarian community often called sectarians, and they take this with humor and love heartily at the stories that people tend to make up about their community, and they say they come around in the end and see everything yourself. The visitors often say that there are rumors that people are in the community not sitting enough. We couldn't finish our food either. And as for me, I'm a big lover of kebabs and fried meat, pork and all different unhealthy food. However, during my three-day visit, I ate only vegetarian food and felt quite comfortable with that. In order to see everything in all villages of the Sarong's community probably will take at least a couple of weeks. I stayed with cheerful sectarians for only three days. First I stay in village Petropavlovka and a little later in the city of San. Petropavlovka does not look like an ordinary Russian village. It is clean and tidy everywhere. If you put asphalt on a dirt road, you will get a typical alpine village, pretty much like a village in Switzerland. Inhabitants of Petropavlovka like beauty and comfort, love art and good landscape design. Perhaps this is the only village in Russia that has its own local symphony orchestra. In Petropavlovka you will not find typical village drunk people. And alcohol is not prohibited, but majority of local people prefer not to use that. You will never hear any swearing word in Russian or other languages there. Large and very well-groomed gardens is a distinctive feature of this place. Houses of various design, here pottery, carpentry workshop, public school and many different hobby groups for children. By the way, people take very good care of children in this village and in other villages. The birth rate here is three times higher compared to average in Russia. Russia, and the level of development of children in these villages exceeds the average level of children in the region. Petropavlovka, unless, uh, unlike many other Russian villages, does not have this persistent smell of manure. This is because most people of the village do not eat meat. Those people that cannot do without meat easily buy it in the shop. But here people don't keep cattle and uh, I didn't see any cows there. Some people breed goats, for example, a cheese made Larissa, she is well known far beyond Kuraginsky region. She makes amazing cheeses from goat milk, and we went to visit her in order to try them. Larissa, известная далеко за пределами Курагинского района, она делает потрясающие сыры из козьего молока. A hot uh, cheese, um, we don't have many of them. Usually in August all shelves are full and all milk goes to soft uh, cheeses. Uh, we tried the old one and now we'll try the young one. Varisa, you have absolutely amazing cheese. I, I know that before you came to the community, you used to live in the city. How you decided to do that and what fears did you have? And you know about fears, it's a separate story. Um, they are real fears. Uh, now I laugh at them, uh, but at that time I felt uh, something terrible. I was afraid of um, minus 40 degrees. I was afraid of mosquitoes that I will have to harvest potato. I didn't understand how I'm going. I used to live in the seventh floor in the city and uh, uh, to make this step was very difficult and I didn't couldn't imagine how I can um, for example wood in the stove to heat the house but nevertheless I decided that you can escape the inevitable and I made a brief brief step and then it became clear that all fears existed only in my head the reality is totally different it is not scary uh, as my imagination depicted there is nothing terrible in burning wood in stove and plus and mosquitoes passed very quickly and frost are not felt here at all and air and sky but um, just the nature itself very beautiful after our city i used to live in uskamenagorsk and i couldn't get enough of breath and i still enjoy that i 
have fresh air, clean air, I see the sky, I see the star, stars and uh, I enjoy that so much. As a big bonus, Petropavlovka and other villages have very clean, not chlorinated well water. Not like in your tap and much tastier, much better taste uh, compared to the water sold in bottles and you don't have to pay anything for that. Stove heating gives completely different feeling compared to steel building, doesn't it? Have you noticed the difference? Oh yeah, you come home, the stove crackles, it's warm and cozy. We especially didn't do any other heating, we just have one stove and we just go to the forest, take some woods and heat the stove and that's it, no problem at all. When I was young, I got university degree on this uh, specialty on dairy products and uh, my graduation paper was on cheese as far as I remember now. And then back in 90s, I started up my bread business and here finally I'm back to my dream uh, to cheese business again. My dream seems to come true and I like it so much. My sub subscriber Alexei was uh, accompanied me and uh, he, he enjoyed goat cheeses. Larissa is very dedicated cheese maker, but before moving to community she had to do the job that she didn't like, like many of us live in the big cities. And we lose interest to our favorite occupation, we lose our life orientation and become very irritated and looking for a purpose of our existence, which we had lost. We lost because we wanted to have our house a little bigger, to have a bigger car and cooler car, to have a little more money. And as a result, we completely forgot what is the true happiness is about. I believe there is no greater happiness in life than to do your favorite job. We uh, lost ourselves in searches of happy relations, forgetting about what is the nature of our happiness. Many people afraid of community life, thinking that they may have to give up some of their property, have to do some public works for free. However, I need to say that the unique feature of this village is that there is practically no common property. People have their own private houses, land plots and other property like cars and different equipment and tools. The only feature of this community-based economy is people that help each other as much as possible and also take part in common projects. This is Alec. As far as I understand, he is an architect of the main temple. He always works. Yes, now we're doing this school, the School 39. They have organized the so-called Newton Park and we help to implement this project. This will be the composition of the little, little prince. This is the planet on which he will sit. This is the rose which uh, Roman created. It will take part in this composition. And little, little prince himself, and we made a little fox also. The composition should be ready by the end of August in order to install in front of the school. What about 26 years ago? What was your motivation to leave the world and come here? Well, the formation of a new society here that began to be built, and the teacher who called us here, and I came here. In my life, I have to be a kind of a uh, person who is completing some projects. Since this temple was an idea of our teacher and he created the concept and just hand over me the design and sketch and I finalized that and brought in the form of which it, it exists now. When I lived in the mountains for first four years, all buildings also participated. This is serious architectural structure, requires a lot of funds. This is very serious project, you, you see that, you see that. So it doesn't mean that if there is no funding, it could be some other architectural projects. 
Of course, this all is doing by own up expenses. And here, basically, we have old people, pensioners, men, and also. We have some actively developing business here, round, round timber for housing construction. There are several sites with very good experience. Our guys do design and construction and quite well work domestically and exporting some of their services abroad. Of course, now these guys do not have a lot of opportunities to actively participate in some social projects. Since they are still developing their business, they have invested quite a lot. But nevertheless, they also take part as much as they can. They share their team and some other resources and even making some works. Here now we have a kids' playground in the center of Petropavlovka and they made some of their works there. You can see their little summer house and we asked these guys to help and they were happy to do that. They've been also doing the entrance space. They haven't completed it yet. They're in process of doing it now. Therefore, we live in closely interact with each other since we have a quite a good understanding that this is our space, this is our life, and our people try to make their input as, as much as they possibly can. Looking at this community from outside, it seems like all people are quite happy around you. They do what they love, they live in the countryside, breath fresh air. And why then some people got unhappy there? I believe that many of them came in these places without good understanding of realities, how to live in countryside. The life is not like in the city here, you have to do a lot of physical work, even if you are a musician or an artist. Back in the 90s, after the collapse of former Soviet Union, many people did not fit quite well into realities of emerging market economy. And the community of Isarion, for some people, was kind of emergency exit, a way out of the system, an opportunity to live without loans, without pollution, without bosses and stress. And some people, of course, did not think thoroughly, sold their apartments, bought land plots in the villages, hoping that all people around them will be kind enough to feed them and provide with firewood and building materials. The reality for these people turned out to be much harder. People of community getting their benefits mainly by their own hard work, and they have to work quite a lot. The first settlers not only bought the land and forest from the state, they also turned the wild tanga, taiga in the blooming garden. If we do not take into account the religious component of the surrounds community, then we will see that the city of the Sun is a community of hard-working creators that have a healthy lifestyle style, eat organic food that they produce themselves, and they raise many children. This place is not for freeloaders and lazy people, alcohol addicts and aggressors, but creative individuals can always find what to do there, in particular in the Abode of Dawn. This is the official name of the City of the Sun, and now we are going to sit together with you. Здесь не место халявщикам и бездельникам, не место пьяницам и агрессорам. Зато всегда находится занятие для творческих личностей. И особенно проявить себя можно именно в обители рассвета. Так официально называется. Can you imagine that you decided to create your own community of interest? And you love nature, you love purity, beauty, you love art and philosophy. Can you imagine that you have the same positive and active like-minded people? And at one fine moment you all together decided to live next to each other and to do something useful. You don't want to see any drunks or thieves or degrading people next to you, and you want to create a better world, a better world for yourself and for your friends. Пьяниц, воров и деградантов. Вы хотите создать лучший мир, лучший мир для себя и для своих друзей. In this case, the most logical solution would be to buy some land like a few dozens of hectares, and to build your own autonomous settlement. But as soon as you do this, you will be called sectarians, and people will be riding away. Because the word sect, translated into Russian, means a part, 
a part of something bigger. In case you may say that you may say that you are a part of humanity, but you are no longer the part of unhealthy society. You become special, and for this reason, you have envious people around you and will ill wishes, or willing to destroy your world and make you wallow in the mud again. The harder it is get to you, the less likely some people would have enough patience to harm you. Probably even organization of certain rituals and cults can make a certain sense. It may prevent unwanted strangers to settle next to you. Any holiday and mass gathering still looks like a religious cult from outside. Why to be ashamed then? However, if you are to practice certain rituals and cults, it is advisable to register a religious organization so that the state understands that you want to have just a nice and quiet life and you don't want to declare re religious war to the whole world. The word religion, if translated literally from Latin, means reunification. From this point of view, even any political movement can be declared as a religion. In every country has also generally accepted religion. For example, for example, Eastern Orthodox Christianity that provides a certain common vector to all people avoiding so-called concept. The top tier of the Orthodox Church will also try to destroy and anathematize your community for simple economic reasons. You do not build temples for the Orthodox Church, but you do it for yourself and your own friends. And if you, let's say, decided to collect donation to buy a yacht, then in case of Orthodox Church, only Patriarch Kirill would benefit it, and in case of Vesarion, the entire community. Initially, the idea was to create a settlement as much independent as possible in order not to be affected by major crises and other economic shocks, and also not to depend on exchange rate fluctuations or changes in prices. Not eating meat in this case looks quite reasonable as well, because if you are surrounded by a tiger, there are no hayfields around, then how come you can do cattle breeding? Refusal to get connected to the unified energy system is, seems to be quite reasonable as well, because installation of a transmission line could be quite expensive and you will always have to pay for electricity. The Saron community members tried to keep low profile, and besides, they were quite busy. They had to clean the place, they had to remove trees, build houses and develop this area. But rumors about the community and happy people there was spread qu quickly enough from the very moment when the city of Sun was established. After the event of September, of 22nd of September, uh, 2020 community has become more open. Many tourists now are coming there and everyone can see the place. This is weed worker, trimming very well. You don't need electricity or gasoline to operate that. It, it used to be swamp everywhere, covered with hill hogs with knee deep water, no road here. At first we needed to wear big rubber boots to get through. We made earth filling here, made an artificial lake. We used to have a swamp here at this place as well. This little house was constructed by teenagers. You can go and see it later. Yes, we have uh, such a program for kids. It has been operating for fourth year already. And in summertime, we uh, teach our teenage boys to do construction works. We call it fifth school term. It was one of the first projects. It was their idea to build such a little house and develop some skills of round log construction. So they did everything with themselves, with chainsaws. They did the project themselves. Adults will try not to interfere. We acted just mandas. We ourselves do wood processing in our sawmill and we use our materials both boys and timber. It's quite interesting, very little house. We still haven't decided which purpose will it serve. Maybe so kind of cafe. And now just it's a little summer house because it's not insulated, it is open. 
We had, uh, you know, quite an interesting program which was organized by a German guy, Horst. Uh, I don't know, it's European program. And one of the topic is youth exchange. Uh, uh, Germans come in here, not only Germans, but also other European countries as well, like Czech Republic. And our guys uh, went to Germany so to communicate with each other, uh, there are many interesting moments, and in particular, they have one uh, project to organize a street cafe. They traveled around different villages, uh, put a tent and cook some food and share this food with villagers, and even for free of charge, uh, and socialize with our guys. The specific feature of this the City of Sun. The name City of Sun was actually invented by journalists, and the official name of the city is Abod of Dawn. You can move around the city only by foot or by bicycle. All cars have to be parked at the entrance in a special parking lot. The city has a round shape. In the very center there is a sculpture, which is the symbol of the city. Five streets diverge from the centers, then there is a circular pedestrian road, and there are 14 more streets with houses on them. They're going from the ring road. Numbers like 5 and 14 seems to have some secret meaning, I don't know exactly which meaning. The names of the streets are quite unique as well, like Milky Way Street, the Street of Solar Winds, the Street of Diamond Roses, Crystal Gates and Lambent Secrets, Children Dreams and Playful Rains. Where the streets end, there is another rain road designed for the passage of equipment in case you need to uh, bring some building materials or any other cargo. Certain parts of the City of Sun, such as uh, Heavenly Abode and Temple uh, Top, are located stepwise at the mountain so high. There is a walking path that leads to them. In order to deliver building materials to the top, a cable way was built with several hundred meters length and 50 kilograms of carrying capacity. The city of Sun has no fences except some small fence around the kindergarten and a fenced area for two cows to graze. The boundaries of individual land plots are usually designated by uh, shrubs or forest plantations. People do not eat meat there and two cows provide everybody with milk. That's it, we turn our milking machine and start the process. should do it in a positive mood only, otherwise it is not possible. It is not allowed to smoke, even for tourists, in because the entire city believes it to be a sacred place. If a tourist wants to smoke, can go outside the city and smoke there. The city also has its own fire machine in order to ensure the fire security. It is not in cozy everywhere. Inhabitants of the Abode of Dawn pay a lot of attention to the landscape design and organization of the space. The climate, like elsewhere in Siberia, is extremely continental, with very cold and long winters and hot summers. Siberia belongs to the risky farming zone, and it means that some crops can be grown only in the greenhouses, such as cucumbers, tomatoes, and even grapes. The greenhouse with grapes belong to the famous landscape designer Denis Safronov, who built many sites in Krasnoyarsk and Abakan. And in the city of San, uh, Denise has his own house and uh, he did some part of landscape design in the abode of Dawn there. Denise, can you share with us what do you do? What are you? I'm a businessman, I'm a gardener. I'm growing plants and do landscape design. How do you have this idea to come here, in this particular place? What caused this decision? The new society being formed here, and people with new principles when money is not the main purpose of their life, only some mean to achieve some higher purposes. And these principles 
which is laying the foundation of the society very close to my heart, and I would like to participate uh, in these processes that take place here. At the outskirts of the city of Sun, in front of the path to the heavenly abode, there is a place where Viserion usually meets his people. Unfortunately, this place is empty now. It is empty not because Viserion himself was arrested, but also because as there is now some restrictions on mass gathering due to pandemic. By the way, coronavirus was brought into community by those people who came to talk about the need for wearing masks. As we say, if you want to force an official to carry out the plan, he will smash his forehead against the ground. In this case, the appropriate question will be whether these officials did not wear masks or where these wearing masks do not prevent from coronavirus. Climbing to the top of the temple requires some stamina, I would say. At the same time, uh, the path is made in a form of serpentine, so that even elderly people can climb it. The temple is now under the construction. What is interesting that I've noticed that they like here to use natural objects and they use a huge stone which was previously exist here as a foundation for this temple. A little higher you can see the bell coat and the heavenly abbot. I didn't go there, I sent quadracopter there for filming, but if you are visiting this place you can climb to the very top. It is rather hard for me to express all my impressions of what I've got. So it took me a couple of days to digest everything after my trip to the abode of Dawn. Bissaron's community is the good, uh, unique example of operating eco-villages, and I believe this will be good if other regions of Russia will copy that. They will benefit greatly by replicating this experience. In particular, given the fact that there are many people who would like to do that, and uh, I know that people even living abroad know about the teaching of Isaron and his settlement, despite of some closeness of community and location. It has everything you need for happy and settled life. Many people ask questions, how come uh, people of the Saron community succeeded to do all that? People simply do not believe that this cool life of the Saron community people can be a result of their own hard work. Let's try to find out how come they live so well in a wild Siberian tiger. One well-known blogger used to say that if you want to be happy, you need to quit the job that you don't like and get involved into some creative activities. And now I will show you how people in the Sarons community managed to do this. I've been forming a texture for the stem, because otherwise it looks like a regular wire. This is the uh, cover, it is made of cedar tree saw cut. Is this resin? No, no, I don't use resin, this is agar. Is it stone? Yes, it is a stone. How did you put it here? Creative process is the process of continuous learning. Of course, when I used to live in the city, I dreamed to have my own workshop, and we had to rent apartments all the time to do this work. Here I have a studio and um, fresh air, and landscapes are stunning outside, and I transfer them to my paintings. And what is this? This will go under the glass table top. There will be such a small elimination. Is it made of wood? And this is a large nesting house. It has 186 centimeters around the circumference. Here I form a leaf and make a desired shape. Вот это шикарная работа. 
Well, this is really a great job. These are semi-finished products. They will still have to be finished yet. These are nice boxes. The special thing about that, that we do not cut out this completely. So it doesn't mean that it has been rotted here in this place. Yes, the core is already rotted in different layers in general. I believe this is quite a unique idea to do these things. Yes, this is a duplex item, two lamps, they will go in pair. According to the technology, you need to center the clay first in order to work further. This has cooled down and goes tighter, but still gives in. If you continue twisting this way, then it, it is naturally will form some kind of a band, which will make this rose look alive. It's basically the whole process to center first, then go inside, push it apart and make a desired form. This is what peels off. It is a scale, a burnt layer of iron. Is everything done already? Yes. The pot is turned out, now I will take it off. This is the final item, the rose. It has leaves already, they are welded and... I do a firing on two furnaces, one is muffle, uh, so-called electric, and the entire firing process is programmed on this device. I don't participate in this process. The more interesting is wood burning because you have to sit for about the whole day near the fire. Гораздо более интересный это дровяной обжиг, потому что там приходится сидеть около суток почти. I would like to say about unique, how unique our teacher. I had to attend a school, academic school, in drawing and paintings, but he never studied anywhere. And he easily take the pastel chalks and do these amazing portraits. You see, in the eyes of these people, just happiness. They're having fun uh, and just live and do what they love. How many different arts in Petropavka? I understand that for two days we were not able to look at everybody. Can you just list who is doing what? We have many artists, not one person, just several artists. And we even have quite well known like Anishinka, Mohov, Igor and Biser. We have three round timber processing uh, active sites, Cherkesov, Belov. We have several crafts, so several porters, and you've met only one, I believe. We have production of uh, musical instruments, wood carvers. We have a nice old man, Aleshka Krohalev, a, a really good uh, carver, excellent one. In the temple which you visited, all carving works were, do were done by him. We have different sculptors, different sculptors. In the mountain we have Sasha Lunin, and he's from St. Petersburg. And in Yusupov Palace he created the exposition Last Dina of Rasputin. This was an exposition and it was visited by Madame Tussaud from France. And they said, this is amazing. We just take off our hats. We have shoemakers as well. They manufacture various kind of shoes. 
even the makeup from felt and some other footwear. We also have some girls, craftswomen, they paint matryoshka dolls to different cutting boards, doing very nice work of high quality. We have sewing workshops, weaving, we have ballet school for girls and even one girl from our village now professionally in Krasnoyarsk, uh, she's dancing in ballet theatre. We have gymnastics, uh, we have circus art. Our guys, they learn how to do various tricks, etc. And all those, all those things, I'm very grateful to my father because he just gave a good piece of advice to our people some time ago. He said that a human being can develop spiritually and actually fully can be developed only when he's doing something with his hands, when the person does what he loves, what she loves. But how to find what you love? You need to try different things, different crafts, and then find what you love. And many people that didn't even know how to approach a hammer, when they came here, they start trying themselves in different crafts until they found what they love. By doing this, the full-fledged spiritual development of human being is not possible without creative process. Many people are probably interested, how come, how come you learn this, where you can take money for training and for learning? It's very interesting, Viserion gave very simple answers for these very common questions. Roman said that as his smithcraft business, he learned for free. But how come he came in and asked a person, give me the training for free? What can you do? We can use various approaches. For example, I want to come to craftsman and uh, want to say, can you teach me certain skills? And uh, let's say um, I'm ready to work for free. And the craftsman will spend his time and allocate some resources. And he will teach me for free. For example, I'm coming to the blacksmith and ask uh, him to help me to learn this skill. And I can do some work. Uh, I can help uh, with doing different different types of works. For example, locksmith or prepare coal for him. And um, he doesn't pay anything for me. Uh, I'm doing this for free and he teaches me for free. And this is a great value for him. Also, as my father suggested, you can um, offer a, a student to you know, work on such condition. He will help you in your housework, in your, uh, at, at home or household. And uh, the craftsman will feed uh, the person, uh, the learner, and teach the skills. There could be different arrangements, quite flexible. And in this case, even if you don't have any money for learning, for training, you can find different ways how to you develop the skills you want. When we do what we enjoy, people usually love the product that we produce because some part of their soul is there, something special about these items, about these products. And it has special demand, you see. When I left Viserion's community, I had even uh, more considerations and more doubts, uh, because these people showed a good example how we need to live to be happy and rich, how we need to develop ourselves and improve what we do. We needed just to overcome extra ego and indicate the direction to show by their own example that money is not the most important thing, the goal is the most important. I will come someday and say, hi, jolly sectarians, and they will laugh and will treat me with tea, with cookies. The interesting fact that with the rest of Viserion, the community did not collapse. On contrary, everybody get convinced that everyone responsible for his or her own life and for everybody and responsibility remains the same or even higher 
The surprising thing is arrest of a Syrian for 30 years of this community. The, it never had any conflicts. Uh, the community didn't have any conflicts with uh, authority. And what's the problem then? And the channel Baza uh, tried to answer. You will see the link uh, in the description below. I have many uh, material after this trip. It was not included into this film. And you can write in the comments whom did you like most of all and with whom you would like to see detailed interview. And even better if you come around to the Saran's community and you will be able to see with your own eyes. И сможете увидеть все своими глазами.